Why don't we start with the hardest question? <laughs> Hi, I'm Renee. I'm a prostate cancer researcher at Monash University. So the prostate gland, it's a really small walnut sized organ that sits in the male reproductive tract. Its job is actually to produce the fluid that help the sperm travel into the female. It's a sperm buddy. In the ejaculate, 95% of that fluid comes from the prostate gland. Only 5% of that is actually made up of sperm. So most of the fluid in the ejaculate comes from the prostate, not the testis. Prostatic secretions are volume and they're fluid to help the sperm move, but they're much more than that. It's producing energy. It's producing nutrients for the sperm to keep motile. It's got all the protectants and the enzymes that that sperm needs to enter into the aggressive and hostile environment of the female reproductive tract. Prostate cancer is a hormone-driven cancer, driven by the male hormones, so everything that makes you feel like a man is also making your tumour very aggressive. Unfortunately, one of the frontline therapies we have for prostate cancer is the removal of the hormones. So not only are some men dealing with a diagnosis and, and living with cancer, but they actually have their masculine hormones taken away and that often makes them have a lot of side effects, loss of sexual function, loss of muscle mass, sometimes depression. So in my research, I'm trying to find out who are the patients we need to identify, who are the patients we need better treatments for, and how can we stop prostate cancer the moment we diagnose it. When we think about going to the doctor to see if we've got prostate cancer, the first thing we have is a simple blood test. So the next step would be a digital rectal examination. And that's gonna be done by a qualified doctor, hopefully with small fingers. And the reason they do that is to feel if there's any physical changes in the surface of the prostate. Is there a lump there? So at that point, some men stop thinking about it and put their heads in the sand. I would say don't be frightened. No one ever died from a digital rectal examination, but it is going to help in your diagnosis, particularly at an early stage. And don't leave it to be 60 years of age to start thinking about that. Let's start thinking about it in our 40s and be proactive leading up to that time.